Well, hello my dears, this is Sarah from SheHoldsDaily.com and today we're gonna talk about builder grade kitchen updates. So I have six ideas that I'm gonna present to you, ways to make your home feel more custom and more vintage and not like everyone else's around you. So. Hopefully this will inspire you if you're trying to give your kitchen a new look. One time when Joanna Gaines was doing one of her first shows and her, her decorating was not what it is today and she didn't have the resources. I mean, they started their season and didn't even have all of the homes lined up. They just like stepped out in faith. And she said at the end of her show when she was like, at the end of that particular episode where she was like trying to put cute stuff together and make it look better, you know, and and she goes, you know what, we're just gonna do the best we we can with what we have, and I, that really stuck with me. I love that, and I just wanna speak that out over you guys, that wherever you're at, whatever your resources are, don't worry that it's not a million dollar kitchen. If you can make it better, do that, do the best you can with what you have. Yeah. So these are some ideas that don't require a full kitchen remodel, don't necessarily require new appliances. Kitchen remodels can be ten to $100,000, so that's not unreasonable. So if you're like, I only have one or 2,000 or something, or even less than that, these are things that really give you a lot of bang for your buck. So, number one, you know I'm gonna say it, paint. Paint, 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 paint is for floors, it is for tile, it is for even countertops. In fact, if you haven't seen my video on how we made a tabletop look like a slab of concrete, I am gonna suggest that you check that out if you're thinking you want concrete counters. I wouldn't even go that route unless you're ready to spend thousands of dollars. The other option is that you paint your cabinets to look like concrete. So this is the process that I used for our table that is now my husband's desk. and. It was originally taken from a blog post on how to paint your kitchen counters. So paint is amazing. I will say it all day long to paint your kitchen cabinets. And white is very classic. It's very safe. It's very um, brightening, lightening for the space. And then we see a lot of also really pretty two-toned kitchens. They call them tuxedo kitchens. And you have like a dark along the bottom or maybe just even on the island. And then upper cabinets are lighter. So paint. First thing you're gonna do is paint whatever you can, okay? Rust-Oleum has a tub and tile paint that I like to paint tiles white. That's what I recommend for backsplashes that need to be brightened up and cleaned up. This is an example of a, a really good kitchen update by Life by Lena. And she totally goes goes to town with the white paint and she does, it looks like she changes out her counters and builds an island and things, but the paint is what I really noticed was the biggest change. So, paint, bring on the paint. Number two, and this is for me the most fun, is to deal with what I call the jewelry, which is your hardware. So kitchens, that are in a kitchen that's gonna be a beautiful faucet. It's gonna be hardware, so your poles, put a lot of thought into those, really get ones that you love. And then lighting, those are the three things in the kitchen. So put a lot of thought into that. I'm okay with mixing metals. I just say make them good contrast, and I, I keep it to two. If you had a huge kitchen, I don't know, some people say you could do three. I like to stick to two, and I also like to keep them on the same plane. So if your lights are gold, but you also want some black hardware, maybe do the black down below. I don't suggest doing a black faucet. I think those are way too trendy and probably on their way out already. So I wouldn't do a black faucet, but holes can be really pretty. And those things are easy to switch out. And even if you're in a rental, you can switch those things out. I mean, I would. And just switch it back when you're ready to go. Okay, number three. Think about what you can use as a really great focal point. So that might be an accent wall like my friend Andrea from Pine and Prospect Home did a faux stone wall. She has a real cottagey look to her whole house. And so she put this old looking stone wall up there and it's not even real, but it's so great. So if you have a really long kitchen, this is a great solution too. So the end wall that you're looking at is if it doesn't have much going on, if it's, if it's a plain wall, it's perfect for an accent wall. 
but I, I also love a really great wallpaper on a wall in a kitchen or you could do beadboard or I know shiplap is quieting down maybe on its way out but I still love it in a lot of spaces so think about an accent wall think about turning your island into more of a focal point so maybe a, like a lot of builder grade homes have just a really plain island and people will come in and add in great trim work to it and maybe some corbels and paint it you know a, a navy blue or something and so really maximize your island if you have one and as well if you're wanting to change your countertops but you don't have the money change just the island or just the breakfast bar area and then that gives it a little bit more of a um, contrast and it doesn't cost to redo everything. An example of a good island makeover is from my friend Rhoda from Southern Hospitality. She dressed up her island and painted it. It actually isn't even an island. It's just um, a corner piece of her counter and she segregated it to kind of make it feel like an island. I think she did a good job on that. Okay, and this is a smell. I've kind of gone in order of what I feel like is the most important. We're on to number four. And this one is less bang for your buck, but and, it's, and it is trendy as well, but I think that it could be a good option. So if you have upper cabinets that you can spare for um, storage, if you, if you have enough storage and you wanna do something different with your upper cabinets, like for instance, I have the one behind me here. I could remove and add some open shelving, and I really love, I love wood open shelving, especially if you're, um, kitchen is kind of white anyway the wood helps to balance that out and give it some warmth so I could if I could spare the storage space I would turn that into open shelving because that is the thing that you give up is storage for things like plastic bowls and food and things so it has I mean you really need some pretty stuff on those shelves so if you can do that I think that would update the kitchen pull down some upper cabinets and they're just screwed into the wall so you can take those down or you could change out the doors and put glass in instead and that will, I feel like that will update the space a little bit. This is a really beautiful example by Studio McGee with the glass cabinets that I just love. Okay, number five. It's really time at this point to bring in your own touches. So whatever kind of like cool old vintage signs that you love, um, storage is really important. So bringing in baskets and glass jars and you know cute crates or whatever and having those hide everything that's utilitarian in fact I really recommend having nothing on your counter that doesn't that doesn't have at least a dual purpose of being decoration so yes you can have you know a jar of flour or like a crock full of wooden spoons or something and I'm talking a lot what about um, some real vintage touches because that's what I love most but um, it, you know anything that is useful but kind of goes with the style of the kitchen but like a toaster even a coffee pot like I keep those things out of sight um, the only thing I do have on my counter is my KitchenAid but it's cream and it like blends in so be really careful with your small appliances or food sitting out and things because that really detracts from the whole finished quiet decoration that you're probably going for. Okay, so that's number five. Number six, and the last thing I'm gonna say is to try to bring in some under cabinet lighting just to dial up the, the mood in the kitchen. You can actually get lighting that just sticks underneath the cabinet. I've seen it at Home Depot, and that way it's not hardwired. Or even like rope lighting, I've seen people do it, or like they'll put it up along the top of their cabinets. Anyway, try to bring in a little bit of some accent lighting spots or maybe you just add like a small lamp in the corner of the counter where just kind of unexpected and I feel like it just really warms up the place makes it look a little bit more expensive and is really nice when the overhead lighting is off so there you go there's six tips for upgrading updating a builder grade kitchen and um, let me know in the comments below if you have more ideas I know there's more those are my top six for today and this actually was recommended by a reader of mine. She said, please do this post. And I don't remember her name, but this one's for her. And if you guys have other ideas or, you know, decorating questions that you want me to tackle, let me know in the comments as well. And I would love to get to those. And if you are in the process of rethinking your kitchen, trying to update it, especially for before the holidays coming up, I recommend designing your own mood board or design board, they're called 
and I have a whole tutorial I have a video on how you can do that and I just think it just like helps you narrow it down because it helps you visualize what the space is gonna look like. I love having them. I love being able to quickly switch things out as I go along, and it just saves me so much time and money. So if you don't know how to make a design board, I highly recommend that, and I will give you a link for the tutorial on that below. All right, you guys, thanks so much for watching. Thanks for stopping by and hanging out, talking about design. And if you're new here, please consider hitting that subscribe button. I post regularly, and I share my professional design advice for the DIY home life. All right, take care. I'll talk to you soon.